what's going on guys it's your boy Sosa here bringing us a video here today bringing guys a photoshop tutorial tutorial <laughs> how to create your own very uncool simplistic sort of like uh lifestyle sky header kind of design um i've seen this little style floating around a little bit i'm not gonna lie but it was pretty dope pretty cool using the sky as uh a, like a way of kind of showcasing a like cool little lifestyle photo in this case i have a photo of myself with 100 thieves um, celebratory party for the CWL London Trophy. That's what I'm holding in my hands. Really cool picture. Someone captured it. I wish I knew his name. I would have dope. I would have totally shouted you out, bro. Just saying. Um, but yeah, absolutely dope. It's a really cool style. And these are the assets that I have today's video. So one would obviously be the picture of myself. Um, the second would be with Photoshop. Hello, I'm switching tabs. Relax. Um, oops, I'm having a brush. The brush tool. Uh, cloud, right? Nice little cloud stock here. Uh, picture of myself, of course. We'll, of course, fix the color correction. So, with, of course, ca camera filter, raw color correction in the, uh, today's video for tutorial wise, those are going to be the burn and dodge tool to actually switch your highlights. So as you can see, my right hand side is very dark, left hand side is really highlighted on this picture right here. And over here, you can see that it's actually reversed, and the highlights on the right hand side and the shadows on the left hand side looks really dope still. I can't wait to show you guys this kind of stuff. This is very much so working with almost like in the term of manipulation in a way, but not quite, but in that kind of realm. Um, and of course the sky background that we're going to change the color of, which is my favorite thing about Camera Filter Raw, when I used to do in like college and stuff like that, and like fix the photos and whatnot. Messing with the sky was one of my favorite, favorite things to do because you can just make it look like whatever you want it to look like. So I think that's really, really cool. That's why the whole sky background thing is really cool for me to uh, go about and do a video on. So with that being said, two links on the video equals a secret down below, which almost like be the PSA that you guys see here today. Um, and also I guess the assets will be in the description down below as well, uh, including a photo of myself, I guess, if you guys want that to practice with maybe. Um, but yeah, with that just done, I also hope this is not too uh, loud during the video. I'm going to hate myself. Um, okay, let's get this thing going. All right, guys, so get this thing going right here, right now. The first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is also for this uh, PSD right here, all I have is this activated layer, which is basically everything I did in this bottom group layer. So don't really worry about it if I just kind of turn it on and off. It's just to show you guys what's kind of like what we're going for, right? Of course, just keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, the first thing I'm going to do is drag in my sky background right here. And now I believe, let me just turn this off for a second. I believe I use a section of it like right about here, right? Yeah, that's pretty damn close, if not exactly where I had it. Literally pretty much right there. So, cool thing is I do have the stuff that I had um, enabled for the actual color correction uh, already put together. But I'm going to go ahead and just kind of like clear this really quickly for you guys. Um, how do you clear? I'm just going to convert it to another uh, smart object. But I'm going to go to Filter. I'm going to go to Camera Filter Raw. Now, this for me is like the, the, the freaking dopest place to go ahead and change your colors when it comes to color correction in your sky. Um, however, at the end of the tutorial, I do kind of mess around and also kind of figure out another color correction that might fit a little bit better. So you don't have to worry about it too, too much. But I would definitely get the the the, the sort of at least some of the shade that you guys would want, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go to this, thir uh, this fourth tab here called uh, Hue Saturation and Luminance Adjustments here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to my Hue table. You're, I think you're automatically on your saturation table. And go to my Hue table and take the blues now you can even have you can google like sunset sky or something like that you can have oranges in there too change those oranges into a nice really cool color um but the simple fact is if you guys change this blue you can see you get these really dope like you can like you can literally have the coolest freaking blue sky in the universe i think this is just so cool to me um like you have a purple sky if you have like orange in here you can of course change the oranges and you might have another tone of blue which is not uh, or you might have a tone where you can actually change your purples and you can get a different color as well or magentas uh, I don't have that in this photo But if you definitely had typed in like sunset 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 You definitely would find something really, really cool But for me, I'm gonna take my blues for this actual photo that I have for this one and move it towards the left to get me like get myself toward this really cool like almost greenish bluish turquoise color Which I think is really really freaking cool for at least uh, the tour here today I'm also gonna take my blacks a little bit and darken them just a little bit more and take my highlights and just make this a little bit more white and that'll make my clouds a little bit more I guess you would say uh, visible um, and just in case you want to see what both of the examples look like before and after you can just click on this little Y right here um, it switches between the cycle before and after and you can see exactly what you guys changed it to um, on the left hand side is before of course on the right hand side is after and again once you're pretty much set with the whole color scheme you wanted to go with you simply just press OK and you're good to start the entire thing so now that this is in here, I'm going to go ahead and drag in my, I also added noise, so I should add that as well. So what I ended up doing on my sky, I just remembered, I went to filter, noise, add noise, and I added about 4% noise 
Um, anything above that is a little bit too much, maybe, and even four might be a little bit too much for your liking. Um, I think three would be a pretty good even sort of like number to go with. I'm gonna go with three just for now. Press OK. And I'm gonna go ahead and just drag in like I already have there. Uh, here is the photo of myself. Now, for the, this is the same exact example photo that I used, so the color, uh, the pen tool loading of it, uh, I didn't even pencil actually, I just used the magic wand tool. I would suggest you guys the pencil, but you can see I get these really fuzzy edges. But for the sake of the tutorial, I would say I just didn't actually, I didn't I didn't care too much to cut it out the correct way. But I would hopefully, that if you guys notice a poor color correction or cutout, excuse me, a, a poor cutout, um, that you uh, assist yourself in making sure it's the, the best to your ability, right? So I'm going to go ahead, center that baby right in somewhere in the middle. Um, and I think this is a pretty good section right here, kind of just kind of mentioning... I'm going to be reversing or resorting to getting something close to this because I feel like I did I did pretty freaking do, uh, dope on that one. So, okay, now that our picture is in, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, go ahead and just convert to a smart object again. So, you guys, I'll do the camera filter roll over again. Um, so, that for this one, it gets a little bit more tricky. So, we're going to go to filter. We're going to go to get camera filter raw. And now, it really also depends... This also comes into kind of play like what your, your color correction sort of uh, or color theory happens to be. Um... For me, my struggle was for this uh, picture here, I had a little bit more of an orange tint going on, right? So I had to, of course, assist myself with like trying to figure out whether or not changing my temperature would be the way. I can, you see, let me just click over here. You can see it's a little more orange on that left-hand side. If my changing my tint would be the way, I would go ahead about this and kind of get a better sort of blue color to go with the actual blue sky. But I promise you, I kind of went with like a zero, zero kind of temperature and tint. But when it comes to your picture, you might have a lot going on when it comes to temperature and tint. So I'm going to also give you guys this little tip here as well. Under um, the split toning, right? I believe the split toning, um, basically the, the fifth tab on the right-hand side here is your highlights and shadows, hue and adjustment saturation stuff. So... You can actually go ahead and change all of your shadows, all the darker spots in the actual uh, image or picture, and you can change them and give them a nice little tint. So in your case, if you have a color correction that is, or a color, I guess, that's super, super freaking harsh on your um, like picture itself that you're trying to edit, and you guys don't want to use temperature, it doesn't work for you or something like that, I would just recommend you guys just to use the split toning, take your hue, put it up for like your highlights, and then put your saturation up for a little bit, and then kind of scroll through this and see which color probably matches, as well as you want to do with your shadows as well, you can definitely do with your shadows as well. Um, that's just my very little quick and hopefully helpful tip, uh, tip for those who have that struggle coming ahead. Um, I'm sure some of you guys are going to have pictures that just don't look quite just good. Um, quite just as good, sure, whatever. Um, I'm going to go ahead. The first thing I'm going to do is up my clarity because I want to have a little bit of clarity on it. Now, I did add a secondary clarity to my photos afterwards for this. So I'm going to add as much as I think that's pretty good for right now. It's about 25%. Um, I'm going to go ahead as well and actually decrease my um, vibrance. That was my way of actually going about... Um, let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys, please. There we go. Going about my way of getting rid of that orange because I couldn't really find a nice color with my tint and or splitting of um, the uh, the this right here, the highlight tones and your shadow tones. So I'm going to go ahead and just take my vibrance and just lower this quite a bit down to around, maybe around here. This looks pretty good. I'm also going to put on my dehaze, uh, up my dehaze, right? It's almost like using a contrast in a way, but it kind of really helps out when it comes to getting those nicer kind of toned colors. Um, I'm going to then go ahead and put on my highlights a little bit. My shadow's gonna go a little bit more darker, black's a little bit more darker, and I'm gonna go ahead as well and take my, um, where is it at? My uh, hue and saturation adjustments, go to my oranges, and make my skin tone a little bit more toward the left hand side, more toward like a, almost a red. Now, very, very slight adjustments. I would definitely suggest that if one, you're doing this for yourselves, you're gonna be in the first tab, the fourth tab, and also the fifth tab, most likely throughout the tutorial, okay? So I'm gonna press okay. And I'm going to go ahead and say that is pretty damn good and pretty accurate to what I have going on over here, right? Now, this one over here has a lot more saturation, uh, uh, clarity onto it, like what I said before. It actually ended up adding more throwing, during the video and stuff like that. So don't worry about it too, too much. Um, but for the sake, I think I can add just a little bit more clarity, which I'll go ahead and just do. Let's say like 35. 35, and then we'll lower this vibrance down a little bit more to like 38. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I definitely like that. All right, so let me also tell you guys the reason why I switched my highlights and my shadows color because I was looking toward this way here. I thought for the sake of the video in itself or the header itself, it might look way, way cooler if I switched the highlights around. So what I ended up doing for that was I actually rasterized this layer. So I'm gonna take a duplicate and call, I'm gonna call this backup 
picture, right? I'm gonna make a duplicate of this backup picture by pressing Control and J on your keyboard. And then what you're gonna have to do is you wanna have to make sure you right click and rasterize your image. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to add dodge and um, uh, dodge and burn, excuse me, sorry. I'm gonna just call this for now the final picture, whatever, right? So you can separate those. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my dodge tool, which is actually these, uh, the O on your keyboard for the shortcut. And I'm gonna go ahead on my right hand side of my face, right? I'm gonna make sure this gets a little bit more brighter. Right now, if it gets a little bit too washed out and brighter, you can go back to your second tool under it, which is the burn tool, which will then go ahead and give you guys a little bit more of a burn. I'll just kind of like say, hey, I wanna make sure that's a little bit less darker or a little bit less uh, highlighted. Now, of course, you can put up your highlights and your shadows inside the, the adjustments that you guys saw in your camera filter raw. However, just keep in mind, I think it's just a, a better idea to do it with the burn and dodge tool, just because you can, of course, pick and choose. Of course, you can pick and choose if you guys use this as well. Let me just show you guys really quickly. Uh, because I don't know what the exact thing is called, but the adjustment brush. So if you guys wanted to actually pick and choose in, if you want to do everything in camera filter raw, right? You can go ahead and just click on this brush right here, brush the right hand side. And then what you do is just end up putting up your, your, your exposure, your highlights, your shadows. Um, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to be definitely using the brush, um, which is just the simple old dodge and burn tool. Okay. So on the right hand side, I made it a little more lighter. So you can guess on the left hand side, I'm going to give myself a little more of a darker look to it now if it gets a little bit too dark of course once again put your dodge tool up and just kind of dodge that right there i like that we'll see right about here as well okay now just for the sake of you guys can see with the dodge tool my uh my exposure is at 22 percent now for my actual sh uh, burn tool my exposure is at 53 percent that's basically how much it's applying so if you guys want to take uh take that and copy the same as i think you guys see here it'll help you guys out to get those maybe the same tones and the same amount of brush strokes to go to get dark like if i could just do one two three four five it gets really really dark over five if yours is at like 20 it might take seven you know what i mean so just keep that in mind um i'm gonna go ahead and just kind of do this at least one time though on the right hand side or left hand side maybe another one and then maybe I'll go over here on the uh, dodge tool again. Say, hey, I want to make sure this trophy maybe gets a little more highlighted. Right, so I'll dodge this a little bit more. Maybe I'll dodge this a little bit as well. Maybe like, hey, got to flex the watch. Make sure it maybe stands out. But as you can see now, it has this really cool look to it. If you want to see the uh, before and after, you can see that you basically switch where the highlight is coming from. So I believe this is definitely the direction you guys probably want to go. Um, when it comes to like maybe like working with a sky thing, maybe whatever direction might be looking at is the direction you want to make sure that the light's coming from. It just has this really cool quality look to it. And also the highlights of the shadows here kind of just didn't make too much sense for me in this photo. That's why I ended up doing it for myself. But I believe most of you guys are going to want to do this as well. Um, with that also being said, we're going to whiten your boy's teeth um, because in this clip or in this photo here, they're not as white as I would like them to be. So just a quick little hint. If you guys wanted to white your teeth, I'm just going to go ahead and just use a soft brush. Um, or a brush, a simple basic default brush, okay? And I'm gonna be using hardest at like 54, and I'm gonna literally get in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my teeth are a little whiter. Now, if you don't do this in post with any and all your photos, you're just, I think you're just a weirdo. There's no way you guys can just let teeth not be white. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. And I know there's gonna be a lot of you guys wonder, wonder how to do it, maybe if you guys wanna do it yourself. It might look super weird now, but all you gotta do is go to luminance, Right, and lower your opacity down. And it just kind of makes them a little more white, right? Okay, that's a little bit much on when it comes to like right here. You might want to outline a little bit better. I'm making my brush small, that's why you see that red, by the way. Okay, there we go, a little bit better. I'll lower this down a little bit more. But just like so you can make your teeth just a little bit more whiter, it doesn't have to be that crazy, but there we go. So now our teeth are white. Now the highlights and shadows have switched as well. And now we can go ahead and just work on that little final pieces uh, of the puzzle, I guess you'd say, which is basically the text in the background here, um, the little bit of other clouds that I put in, and a little bit of the little bit of lighting effect that I put in as well. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say, clarity needs to be a, little, a lot more, I would think. So in this final picture here, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn it to a smart object. I, I, I quickly do that. I have a, a little bit of a sense to do that all the time. If I'm working with a color correction in Camera Filter Raw, I quickly right click on the image and then go to camera or convert to a smart object. So that allows me to do, I'm actually gonna combine these two layers as well. That's my white teeth layer. Um, I put it on a new layer before, remember that? Right click, convert to a smart object, I'm gonna call this picture. 
What this allows me to do when I actually activate and use the camera foot to raw, and when I close it back down, you guys will notice that it actually sets it up so I can go back into it. So always keep that in mind when you guys are doing it. But I'm going to go ahead and now turn up my clarity just a lot more now. Right about here, 30, mm, we'll say 35. So totally put it quite a, uh, quite a bit up, but for now, we're getting to that nice looking cool look to it where you can see the before and after again, right? Starting to look really, really good, honestly. So now all I have to do is the actual text in the background. So for that here, I'm going to be typing in the word Seso HQ. Now the font that I'm using in today's video, <gasps> excuse me, the font that I'm using in today's video is going to be called Uni Sans. Now you guys will be seeing that soon, hint, 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 um, in a different video. But uh, I'm going to just make this a little bit bigger. I love this freaking font. It's a really, really dope, just super clean font. If you guys love, like, the Gotham family font, um, dude, this one is... I love this fucking font. There's just period, right? Just that's all I got for you. Um, okay, so with this here now, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do this really, really simple little trick where you got to have this really nice, subtle, subtle, subtle um, little text effect, I guess you would call it. And so for this here... Also, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's these really nice little simple little subtle effects that are going on in the text effect. I thought I would just like point that out if you didn't notice it. Um, okay, so to do this, all I ended up doing was making, uh, it's clicking on my text, clicking on this layer masking tool here, which is add a layer mask, right? You just simply click on that. And what that ends up doing is puts a window on the right hand side for you guys. So with this window here, if you hold, if you have your brush activated, okay, a nice little soft brush with like zero hardness. If you guys were actually erase or have, excuse me, a black brush, by the way, when you guys click on this right here, it automatically switches your colors. So I'm just gonna make this like a red, I'll make this like a blue, right? As soon as you click on this layer mask, you can see in your left hand side here that your colors actually switch. So black erases, and let's say, hey, I don't wanna erase too much, so just a white, and just fill it back in. It's a very, very simple, cool technique that you guys want to use mostly all the time when you guys are erasing things. There's very few points where using a layer mask to erase is not probably like the best option. So just keep this in mind. Make this a default for your entire career when it comes to like erasing things. It'll save you guys way more time than you would actually realize. Okay, so black brush erases. So I'm going to do that again. So you can see here, I already did the little effect right here as I just erase a little bit, right? Right under that H and the Q. Now let's say you wait, you do a little bit too much up there. Well, let's just do this a little bit more smaller so I don't mess up too much. Let's say, hey, you erase a little bit up here. Make this again white. Fill that baby back in. And let's say, hey, I want to make a little more less um, aggressive erase there. You just say, hey, kind of fill that in a little bit more. So once again, left hand side, I'm going to take a black, go over it. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. And notice, by the way, guys, that I'm not erasing with the middle of my brush. Let's pretend for a second there is a point right in the dead smack of the middle of the brush here. I'm not erasing with that. I'm very much so erasing with like the middle point being very, very far away from it. Because as you guys know, it brushes. Um, let's go ahead and just quickly give you guys a quick understanding of what I'm trying to say. With a brush, right, once you click in the middle, uh, I'm on pin light. Let's not do that. Let's do this. There we go. I'm still on pin light, normal. There we go, I'm just gonna use a white, okay? So with a brush, you can see right in the middle, that's where the focal point of the actual brush light is. As you guys notice, if I click, let's say, like we're focused on the middle again, let's just actually put a dot here first of all. Let's put like a red dot. You guys are probably like, wait, bro, what, why is this so difficult for you to uh, like communicate? My bad. Um, okay, so white brush, click in the middle. You can notice that the point of the impact where the most light is, is in the, of course, the middle of the section where you guys click in the middle. But if you guys erase with the edge of the brush, you can guys start seeing that the white kind of fades in gradually. That's what I'm using when I use any sort of brush and any sort of like highlight stuff. I'm very much so not using the middle of the brush. I'm using the strand ends of the brush because it's not as, I guess, super um, intense as it is if you guys were to click dead smack in the middle. So hopefully that understand, you can get a better understanding of what I'm trying to say there, but that's how I'm getting these really nice little faded lines where you can still see basically the edges of the actual text. So keep that in mind when you guys are erasing things around. Um, second little thing that I end up doing was when you guys are done erasing your second or your left and right sides of the text, what I'm gonna end up doing is pressing Control J on my keyboard. And then with this little same text is hit right here that is basically duplicated by pressing Control and J and or you guys can just go ahead and take your layer, drag into the new layer section, make a duplicate like that. Um, if you guys wanna go ahead and though, and fill in, you see how it's still erased here? I'm gonna make sure this, you guys know this is a duplicate. I'm gonna turn this off for a second. As if, if it's still erased here, you guys can click on your actual layer here 
and then quick fill any color in fully by pressing alt backspace that right there erased it all that makes basically means that when i press alt backspace it takes my foreground color which is black which you guys know erases and i'm gonna take control white and that fills everything back in so all that stuff that we erase is now filled in perfectly and now it's basically right where it started off with and now i can do the little secondary effect that i wanted to do which is take my fill lower this down to zero percent double click on this open it up go to my stroke change it to inside one pixel uh, color is white blend mode normal you press ok you can then turn on the uh thing we did before right the uh, the red layer that just switched up really quick so hide as you can see it right right click on this uh duplicate of it right the duplicate text right click uh, we're just going to convert it to a smart object or you can uh, rasterize it whichever one you want to do uh, i'm going to convert it to a smart object but then i'm going to go ahead and add another layer mask and you can inspect what we're going to do we're going to take a brush take it black and then we're going to erase all these little edges and just keep these really nice little subtle effects in the little uh, text effect designers themselves uh, people who are really looking at it and loving it will understand the 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 power of it we're also going to make sure you put this above the text almost forgot about that uh, above my my uh my my facial text or my, my facial text my picture there we go cheat my facial text excuse me um that way we get the lines in front of the use you can still see where letters maybe if you if you didn't notice before that's an s and an o someone can say that's like a six or something i don't know you if they can make if it's a different font of course as well they can suggest that it's a different letter so that's why you kind of put the 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 stroke above the text and then simply erase a few of the spots maybe you don't want to have your eyes covered you can erase that maybe you don't want to have your chin covered or much of the trophy covered you can erase that we'll just make this a little more subtle here too right just like so just like so right so you can now see more or less like the uh the s and the o rather than kind of like having it suggested it's this really nice little subtle effect with the stroke that just makes it look really, really cool but also getting into here i'm gonna erase all these other edges here of the text and where it comes back where this little little erased faded parts are you can go ahead and make that nice look nice and subtle and then say right here right here makes it really, really nice and it just has this really little pretty effect to it you can see if i turn it on and off and but more or less you're pretty much doing it so that you can actually have text in front of your actual face without it being way too like just annoying and whatnot also a little effect you can do as well let's say if you want to have the stroke being over here and make it look like the the text behind it looks a little more i guess um i don't know 3d almost to it you can take your black brush again and erase during it a little bit like right there that might look a little more cooler of effect to you guys but have like a fade from like fill to like a stroke it's pretty cool but i'm personally not going to do it for this uh sake of the tutorial but i know people of course do that as well um i'm also going to erase this no not that this there we go let's just do it right here that works cool Okay, so once you guys are basically happy with that, the last little parts of this video is basically me dragging in this little uh, uh, stock right here, which is actually be a, a little bit of a cloud smoke that I made. So you can just take this, you can put this in nice little sections, maybe like right above my hair, like right here. You're just basically adding in your own little clouds, almost like adding a little highlights as well. But of course, above your, uh, your person, right? Just like so, I think it looks pretty good. Now, not, last but not least little tip that I'm gonna end up doing is taking a nice little new layer. This is gonna take a lot of trial and error, by the way, but, uh, just for the sake of knowing. Um, with the new layer, I made a bigger brush, right? I have a same soft brush, zero hardness. I made my size 1280, uh, 1263. If you guys wanna know how I actually make my brush bigger and smaller without actually going through that um, little sec uh, settings bar, I just hold Alt and move my mouse while I'm actually left clicking. Um, like left and right. So left and right is to make your diamond bigger, up and down is to make your hardness 100% uh, uh, to zero, right? Just so you guys know, okay? Um, also, let's, okay, that's fine. So what I'm gonna end up doing is hold Alt. When you hold Alt with your brush selected, um, it's actually gonna bring up the eyedropper tool uh, just automatically while still being on the brush. And you can basically hold left click, okay? And then you can just basically see if you hover around the actual banner design, it'll take any color that the eyedropper is on. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take this nice little blue color, right? Let go. Your brush now comes back. And I'm going to basically click and drag, and give myself a little bit of a cool little sort of like, so I ended up, what I ended up doing was this. Took my brush and kind of went towards this way. And then from this section right here, went up to kind of like this way. Okay. So this is going to end up doing is I'm going to change it to normal, the blend from normal to linear dodge add. Now you can start already to see that the, the, the colors themselves quite don't look 
don't look quite that great. So this blue here might be a little bit too harsh and this is a little bit too blue. What I end up doing is I press Control U on my keyboard, okay? I bring up my hue and saturation table while also selecting on that actual layer still. That's what pressing Control U does. Um, you can move your hue left and right and you can get some different colors. That might look, that looks pretty cool. Also keep in mind as well, when you're done with this little section here, we throw it into camera filter raw one more time. So you can also change your orange values as well as your blue values to make it look really cool as well. So this might be a cool idea for you guys, but for me, I want to get close to what I had before, which is around here. Let's say if it's a little bit too much here, we can wash out the blue by taking our lightness and throwing it up a little bit more. Okay, it looks pretty good there. And if you guys don't want too much color, you can lower your saturation as well. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. I'm going to lower my uh, opacity a little bit more. I'm going to go and say, that's pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna throw on my layer mask, take my brush, make it black. I'm gonna go in here and kind of erase around my face, like the frontal of my face. I'm okay with having a little bit of that nice little glow on the top of my uh, top uh, top of my head, sorry, but not too much around, um, not too much around my face. I say that's pretty good. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and say, for the sake of the tutorial, that's pretty good. You can go into depth if you want to kind of put more clouds maybe in front of your face, but I personally didn't like how that looked, but if you want to put it in front of your face, maybe lower the opacity a little bit more, or take it and erase some of the parts like around it so it wasn't so harsh, you can have it in front of your face um, to be a little bit kind of like in the sky, but for the sake of this, I'm pretty okay with this right here. So the final actual part of this tutorial is that final color correction you guys are going to be able to do is, so you basically select the first layer or your top layer, right, which is that little last, should probably be that last light we just did. Then you hold shift, go all the way down and click all the way until you get to your bottom uh, background layer. That'll basically select everything in between when you hold shift. Um, so control J on your keyboard, it makes a duplicate. And then control E will merge it all together, just like so. So I can go, I can just then group this together and just call this like um, backup, whatever, right? But right here, we need this one out of there, okay? So now this layer, we just basically, uh, once again, press Shift and selected everything, then press Control J to make a duplicate, and then press Control E to merge it all together. Gives us this one single layer with everything now that we just did in one single layer. So then I can go ahead and right click, uh, convert to a smart object, go to Filter, uh, Camera Filter Raw, okay? And then I'm gonna just turn on this little Y before and after cycle. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what I'm gonna end up doing. I'm gonna go back to my fourth tab, which is that hue and saturation and luminance adjustments. Take my blues, mess around a little bit more. Maybe I want like a nice little, ooh, like a greenish tone to it. Um, maybe I wanna mess around my oranges, make my face a little bit more, maybe like, I'll say, maybe I'll keep my face in that same little section where it was before, but I'll take my saturation and say, hey, my face definitely is more of an orange color. Maybe I wanna bring that out a little bit more and make it come out to be like so. That looks pretty good. Um, let's say you didn't want any color in your face, you do that. I don't know why you do that, but just for the sake of knowing, of course, with saturations, left is gray, right is saturation to make it more uh, of the color that you end up moving towards the right. So I'm gonna make moving my orange towards the right. Uh, moving my orange towards the right is gonna make my face look a little bit more, I guess, saturated, right? So it looks pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead back to the hue, back to the blue. Move that over there a little more. So you can see on the left hand side, it's not as like vibrant and dark, or vibrant and like just like flashier of uh, flashier of a blue. This is more of like a like a like a regular blue. This is more like a turquoise. But what I'm gonna end up doing is go to my basic here. I'm going to my blacks and just make this a little bit more darker, okay? I'm going to go ahead, That was I don't know if you guys heard that weird sound coming out of the outside. Uh, take my whites, throw this up a little bit more, highlights and be up a little bit more, shadows, maybe make it a little bit more lighter as well. And I'll take my clarity maybe and throw this up just a little bit more as well once again. I'll say 15% or plus 15 is pretty good. I honestly think that looks pretty nice. I'm okay with that. Maybe I'll just take this vibrance, put it up a little bit, like 10 or so. I'm going to press OK, and I'll see what I got. I'm going to go ahead and say I am pretty freaking OK with this. So that little color correction kind of makes everything just very nice and tied together. And um, that's today's video here today. So with that being said, that's pretty much all that I got for you guys here today. I hope you guys enjoy. Um, of course, I'm going to give you guys these assets. It'll be in the description down below for you guys to download. Includes that little uh, cloud stock that you guys just saw. That's actually from my Align pack, by the way. Um, the sky texture that I got. 
um, which is just, I just literally typed in sky, just so you guys know. Um, you can type in, like I said, sunset, get some really cool colors in the background of yours, mess around with them with that camera if it's a raw, like I said before. Um, it can it can be really, like, really, really cool. Just like I show you guys really quick. Let's just, just throw in a quick little orange in here. Let's say you had like a sunset and there's like a little bit of orange in there, okay? And you had camera filter raw up. You can then go to use hue and saturation adjustments, take your oranges, and you can move the oranges around too. You can make a really cool like pink sky with like really cool blue. If you guys of course had red or orange inside that color of the sky that you end up choosing, but I didn't. But with that being said, I'm done. I'll touch you guys later. Of course, if you like this video, you can stick it down below, which will be the PSC that you guys see here today. Much love. Absolutely love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. All that cool stuff. I'll touch you guys later. Since HQ out, then I keep smiling. Stay positive. <laughs> Why do I always do? I uh, it always it has it, it just ruins it sometimes. Um, keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Love you guys later. And also don't forget to subscribe if you guys haven't already. Peace out. Later. All right, guys. So, quick little tip. Just saying, I made it to the end of the video. Um, the comparison here. You guys notice my background here is a little bit more sort of like muted, and/or sort of like a little more darker. Quick little tip, by the way, if you guys didn't know. Uh, if you right above your actual stroke text here, if you go to your adjustments and you go to where it says, where is it? Where is it? Photo filter, right? You have an orange set, just like so. You have your density set at maybe like below 25, like like 20 or so, something around here. You'll notice you get that really cool sort of like uh, better tone where it's not as, if you can just uncheck it really quick, not as, I guess, super vibrant and stuff like that. But then when you go ahead and go back into your camera filter raw, right, quickly, just like so, and you throw on all that color correction with the clarity and stuff like that, you get that nice, deep, really dope look to your sky where it's not so saturated. That gets really close to this one. Ta-da. My bad for not saying it before.